Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel. Uh, we don't have any cool modifications or repairs to uh, film this week, but we have this uh, 87 FJ60 in uh, that's not charging. So I figured I'd walk you through uh, how we diagnose a no charge on one of these. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually check the battery. So we'll hook our battery tester up and let it turn on. Go down here, select battery, it's a 12 volt. This one's got a spiral cell AGM battery. Put in our cold cranking amp that we got off the label. And our battery is testing good, but recharge. Um, a lot of times weird electrical issues can come about just from a weak battery. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, charge this one. Uh, just to make sure, rule that out, make sure it's not, make sure it's not the problem. So we'll get our battery charger out. And hook that up. And I'll swing you over here so you can see the charger. Um, this one's got an Optima in it. So we wanna make sure we set it to uh, AGM battery, 12 volts. And we're just gonna do a fast charge. And we'll let it start charging. With uh, AGM batteries, you, make, you wanna make sure you don't charge them too quickly. Uh, you'll boil the electrolyte out of them and then they won't come back to life again afterwards. Uh, so yeah, while that's charging, we'll go, the next step is what I like to do is check the fuses. I've already pulled the wiring diagram on the charging system. Um, and we've got three fuses that, it, that run that system, engine fuse, the gauge fuse, and the charge fuse. Um, all of those are up under the dash. I've already checked them and they're good. Um, and you want to do more than just pull the fuse out and look at the, uh, the link inside of it. Sometimes they'll burn out where you can't see the, uh, the burned out fuse portion. So I like to actually take a test light and test and make sure I've got 12 volts on both sides of the fuse. Um, then you know for certain that it's good and it's passing voltage. So we're gonna let this charge for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll start on the next steps. Okay, so we let the battery charge overnight um, and we re-ran the battery test and we're testing good now. Uh, so we know that our battery isn't the problem. Now we can go on to doing some more in-depth testing since we know the fuses are good, we know the battery's good now we can actually start looking at the wiring and the alternator. Um, and what I should have done at the first of the video, and I didn't, uh, because I'd already done it off camera, uh, is just hook the voltmeter up just on the battery and then start the truck. Because right now we're at 12.6 volts. We should be charging at above 13, closer to 14. Um, so we'll start the truck and see if our voltage goes up. Well, it doesn't want to stay running right now. Uh, I already did this test earlier and the voltage doesn't increase um, while the engine's running. So now we can start looking at actual uh, wiring issues and the alternator. So the next thing I would normally do 
is take my uh, voltmeter and hook it to the charge post on the alternator and check again to see if we've got uh, charging voltage. And now it'll run. So now you can see we've got nothing. We've only got 0.53 at the back of the alternator. And we've only got 12.34 at the battery. So let's do a little bit deeper digging. We know that nothing's coming out the back of the alternator and we know our battery voltage isn't going up. We also know that this is a fairly recent uh, remand battery and the customer had already taken it in uh, to have it tested, or I'm sorry, not remand battery, remand alternator. It's already been in and tested. Um, so it's a fairly good bet that it's in decent shape. Um, I don't usually trust that, uh, but instead of starting focusing the alternator, we're going to start with the fusible links um, because these are a known issue. This fusible red wire here uh, is your charge wire. So we'll take uh, ohm meter and check across there for continuity. So we'll get our volt ohm meter out here. Let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see it. There you go. And then we're just going to check from one side of this fusible link to the other. And it's showing almost a million ohms, which uh, is an open circuit. And it's also changing as we flex it. If we just put the two probes together, we get, you know, really low ohm numbers. So it looks like it's our fusible link that's burned out and it's not letting any voltage or current pass from the alternator to the battery. The really quick and dirty test um, to see if that's the case is uh, we'll put the uh, bigger, easy to read voltmeter back on here. Like so. And then we're just gonna take a jumper wire from the charge lead on the back of the battery uh, over here to the alternator, or to the, we're going from the back of the alternator to the battery. Sorry, I'm all tongue tied this morning. So again, engine off, we're at 12.53 volts, but now we've got a jumper wire bypassing our burned out uh, fusible link. And with the fusible link bypassed, now you can see we're at 13.65. And if we unhook the bypass, we pretty quickly start dropping again. Um, you want to be real quick with your bypass wire uh, because a skinny wire like that will, uh, will burn out pretty quick. Just uh, just a few seconds this bypass was on there, it's already hot. Um, so yeah, now we know for sure that it's our fusible link that's bad. So we'll just go ahead and order a new one of these up from the dealer, um, pop it in, and we should be good to go. Um, hope you found that helpful. Um, if you did, please subscribe below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.